Bienvenidos desde Lima, Peru, but more specifically the historic center. And I'm taking you along with me to be able to explore this beautiful area. We are starting on the Giron Conde de Superunda, which is a freaking mouthful. But the street is so full of life, color, like beautiful shades of yellow, reds, oranges, <laughs> blues. And not only that, but like there's these beautiful balconies that surround you on both sides. I will get more into the balconies a little bit later. Um, but lots of people kind of hustling about and kind of shoving me, sadly. Lots of dogs, if you're like me. Um, I love animals. Ah, he's so cute. He's kind of taking a siesta. Maybe he has his belly full. You'll see lots of those around here. And lots of really cool um, little restaurants. Kind of like holes in the walls where you don't really think about it. Because, well, yeah, it's a historic center. And yeah, a lot of tourists come here. Because why not? You're here, right? Um, people tend to stick around like Mito Flores and stuff like that, especially when it comes to food. But be adventurous! <laughs> now, as we walk a little bit away, and maybe you can't see it right now, but I can, I see the place that I am really excited to see and introduce. I actually have never been there before. Kind of crazy i've been to peru so many times and i haven't really taken the opportunity or the chance to really explore the historic center so i'm really excited oh yeah that's another thing that you will notice here in lima specifically is um lots of horns i mean they say there's quechua spanish and horn honking for the third language i mean Maybe not an official language, but probably pretty close. So, the next site that we're coming up on is the Basilica and Convent of the Santo Domingo, which is this beautiful pink and off-white yellowish color. But I find the pink to be very unique in color because you don't really see many churches that are a colorful and b um, pink and not that i mind at all because i love the color pink and it's more of a salmon color and i prefer salmon so a little more about that that i actually think was the coolest part about this church that i read is the main house or historic building there is actually um, the University of San Marques, which was the officially the first university of Peru, which is actually the oldest university in all of the Americas. That's kind of crazy, right? I mean, I didn't know that before then, but I would have never guessed that the oldest university would be here in Lima. So the more you know. But back on this really super duper long named street. Now, it didn't actually get its name, this really long name, until around the 20th century. And before that, the street expanded around six blocks and it had six different names. So I guess, you know, you have a little bit of a trade off. You don't have to remember six different block names anymore. You just have to remember the long one. So, another really cool portion that I, I've been by, but I haven't really immersed myself in, is called the Central Post Office Alleyway and Post Office of Lima. It's no longer a post office. It actually closed a couple of years ago. And since 2011, it has become a museum of Peruvian gastronom gastronomy. It's really hard to talk. <laughs> Which, can you blame the Peruvians? I mean, when your food is as delicious as it is here in Peru, I mean, why not make every building that you can into a museum or into something about gastronomy? <laughs> now, 
this building is also in the really pretty shade of pink that the church was. So I, I actually kind of see that quite often. Now, there is the main building, which is pink, which is the post office. And they said right behind it is actually the alleyway. And we will be going through it first time, actually. And it's supposed to be a bunch of little bitty shops for you to just kind of browse and shop about. Give me one moment. I want to make sure to cross the street and look both ways. Make sure you do that while in your like while you're here um, and if you look once make sure you look again because people kind of tend to come out of nowhere and you know they're not looking for you so you have to stay alert and be conscious so this is the main alleyway again this is right behind the old post office building and like I said it's a bunch of shops which are really colorful and beautiful like it seems like even when they're closed like they're painted and I wish I knew the name of the flower that these actually are if you know the name of the flowers that are painted on these little bitty they're like storage units they almost look like storage units but they're not storage units because they house these little pop-up shops but let me know because the flowers are actually really pretty really colorful and above me, it almost looks like glass. And maybe at one point in time there was glass, but now I think it's completely open, but it's really pretty. Like, and there's not that many people through here. I, we're gonna speed up because there's just a big open area right here. And not that many shops towards the end of the alleyway. Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. If you like, if you're like me, you like plushies. You're never too old for plushies. <laughs> but you can get some really cute stuff here if you're thinking of your kids, your loved one, and you've almost forgot to get them something. Although there's plenty of places all through Lima that you can also get your your souvenirs from, and I do recommend you check those places out too. Now stairs, there's actually not that many stairs through Lima, which is quite the opposite of when we, like, when I visited um, Italy. So the main, like, focal point that you will find when you are here in the historic center and it's almost impossible to miss is the government palace. and. Actually known as the House of Pizarro because, I mean, of course, Francisco Pizarro is the whole founder of Lima. Oh, well, I will correct myself. But Pizarro is a very well-known name that you'll hear quite a lot. Oh, he's the conquistador, not founder. So excuse me on that. But he's the one that came, he built this house back in 1535 unfortunately it's a very unlucky I want to say unlucky as in it's caught fire twice so the building that we see now was mostly built between the 1920s and the 1930s but don't let that like I said make you feel sad or anything it's a beautiful beautiful building and if you are here and if you do decide to come here I highly, 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 highly recommend, can't recommend it enough to get here at noontime because they do the changing of the guards every day, every day at noon. And I'm not sure if they changed it any. I know the one time that I did come, I wasn't allowed at all in the square, but they had it all blocked off because of protests that were going on. But it seems like that may not be the case today because I am like right outside the gate. But it's absolutely gorgeous. Huge. Like huge is an understatement. Oh, I should mention that this house houses. That sounds a little redundant. <laughs> this is where the president of Peru stays. How cool is that? Like you'd almost feel like a king, even though you're not a king, you're just the president. 
but you even have your own royal is it called royal guard but you have your like your own guard as president like that is awesome now whew, it's really bright and i'm gonna make sure that i don't look up too much because the sun is literally right there because i decided to come well, I decided to come when there wasn't a lot of traffic or wasn't going to be a lot of traffic. That's also another thing that you shouldn't be mindful of is Peru during peak hours. There's a lot of traffic. There's a lot of people here. I've seen this place be busier than what it is now, but I am now in the birthplace of all of Lima, Peru. It is the main square, the Plaza Mayor, the Plaza de Armas. There's a lot of names for it, but this is the absolute fundamental birthplace of what Lima has become, what it is now. You see the cathedral that I'm walking towards, and I do recommend that if you're here to take a tour, like get a tour group and, you know, explore each individual places. This will be much more knowledgeable about it and you get to see a lot of cool things because it's not just the Incan culture, it's the colonial Spanish culture that you see all through here. And right next to the church, you see the Arch Archbishop's Palace and they even have the beautiful balconies. But this one is like, I find those to be like extremely gorgeous. And another thing that you will see a lot is lots and lots and lots of yellow, but I don't mind it. It's a really pretty shade of yellow and there's just so much life here like I can't get over of like people just come here to waste time to spend time with their families to just take a normal scroll to live their everyday life and you know it's just kind of really cool to to be a part of that and to share a part of that and another really cool thing is this fountain back behind me um, I do believe that fountain was provided in the 1600s not really sure about the time <laughs> but it's it's really pretty I love fountains so I want to go to this really cool street alleyway and I want to make sure that I know exactly where I'm going so I don't look too lost <laughs> so once I find that I'll be right back all right so i'm not gonna mention how long it actually took or how much time has passed to find the street but the good news is i finally did and we just came from right over there so we are now on Giron de la union and i said that's still very americanized <laughs> so, you know so this street is completely pedestrianized so it's completely closed to traffic so you will find tons of people here so i should recommend coming during the weekday where people are at work and kids are at school uh, because this is going to be a sea of people during the weekend now it's still colorful like the rest of the square but not quite as much it's very commercialized now um which makes sense because there's tons of little shops because you know people want to you know appeal to the people who are walking back and forth so another really cool thing about this street is it's not really a street and i say that as in the ground is completely tile as if you're like indoors i mean i keep saying i know that makes sense but i mean if cars aren't really passing through you don't really have to worry about them getting destroyed so <laughs> Now, if you're walking through, people are just strolling, going in and out of these little shops. Like, I'm pretty sure you can find almost anything through here. I mean, the street is very bus, bus, bustling, bustling, is that the correct word? Okay, so good news is I found more of the balconies that I mentioned earlier that I would talk more about. So. Lima is so unique when it comes to these closed style balconies because the people who came here back in the day which was during the, the, the conquest um, <laughs> was uh, more conservative and the really cool thing is is you can only find these 
in this Latin American city. All of the other ones are more open. So like if you go to other Latin American cities, you'll find more of the open balconies. Now these are supposed to be unique from Egypt and Syria. So if you go there, you may find uh, more balconies like that. And it makes sense because this was the most important boulevard of all of Lima back in 1535 where all of the most affluent people, the most influential men from all over the world would come. And it makes sense to live up to the name that Lima had, which was the City of the Kings. How cool of a nickname to have, the City of the Kings. I mean, just saying it makes me feel, I don't know, royal. So there is more um, cathedrals coming ahead. Oh, run, 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 run. Don't want to get hit by cars because technically I wasn't supposed to be crossing the street. So don't follow in my example. It's a bad example. So, oh, wow. Now this entrance to, I believe this is also a cathedral. You'll find lots of cathedrals here in Lima, but I find that very common for South America in general or any Latin American country. And how cool is this store? Is that a store inside this freaking, I don't know, cool building? So I was talking about the third language of Peru being horns. They're speaking to me. Too bad I don't really speak their language because I don't think I would have the nerve to drive here. Like, if you drive here in Lima, kudos, kudos to you. <laughs> I think my my stress levels would fly off the, the rocks. So this street is fairly long. So it is nice if you're just wanting to walk off a few of those calories that you uh, racked up from eating all of the delicious Peruvian food while you're here because that is exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, so that street was much longer than I had anticipated, but we're finally here at the last landmark that I have for you to show you. And I'm gonna walk the street before the light turns red again. Wow, oh, the red light uh, lasts for like, I don't know, like 90 seconds and then you get like not even 30 seconds to cross the street. Ooh, watch your step if you're coming this way. <laughs> I'm sure there's a main entrance in all corners. But to introduce this plaza as I have before in my other Peru video of the five things to see or do while in Lima is the Plaza de San Martin which <laughs> you see San Martin on his horse. I don't know the horse's name. I wish I did because I like animals and I like knowing that stuff. Um, which was inaugurated on July 27, 1921, the 100th anniversary of Peru's independence. So that's really cool. Also San Martin, which Jose de San Martin is the liberator of Peru. And this place was dubbed a World Heritage Site in 1988. So, little tidbit. This plaza is really cool too. We came here, or I should say, I came here last time when the whole entire Plaza de Armas was completely blocked off. And I was kind of sad, but I, you know, walked a little ways and made it here. And this is just a really chill spot too. Like I said, people just sitting with their families, just passing time. It's not as busy as the Plaza de Armas. So that's also another thing to keep in mind if you prefer a more chill, lax area, which I do. So <laughs> I definitely recommend coming here, even if you're coming to the Plaza de Armas. I mean, it's not that bad of a walk. I definitely recommend just coming here too. Oh, and like I said, more dogs. And they look like they're playing. You'll find these everywhere. Like, not kidding. It, it's, it is sad to know that like some of these guys don't have homes, but some of them do have people who do watch and take care of them. We call them bodega dogs. 
which a bodega is like a little small shop. Oh, hello, sun. Hello, sun right in my eyes. <laughs> so this is going to conclude my historic walking tour. I'm so happy that you guys could come along with me. It's been really fun. Um, if I got anything wrong at any point on the information that I was providing and you're from Peru, please go ahead and comment down below, you know, and correct me. I love this city a lot and I love learning more things about it. And I want to make sure that the information I had obviously is correct. Um, and again, if this is your first time experiencing this beautiful city, please let me know what you enjoyed the most or, you know, what you found the most interesting. Um, or if you just want to say hello, that's cool too. So if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more travel tips and videos. Until next time, ciao.